Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit weird. I've got a cold for the last couple days. Haven't been able to go to the gym, but I still feel well enough to <coughs> react. Well, that doesn't take much energy, right? Anyways, today I'm reacting to a magician named Woody Aragon. He's from Spain and he's appearing on Penn & Teller's Fool Us. He's actually one of my favorite magicians. I mentioned him briefly in another video of mine about a Shin Lim special appearance on AGT because Shin Lim performed one of Woody Aragon's effects, one that I also enjoy performing myself. And it's so cool to see that now he's gonna be on Penn & Teller's Fool Us, so I'm very excited about that. Can't you hear how excited I am? But seriously, I really am excited to see what he has in store. He's a very creative magician. Magician. And after the reaction, stick around for something I call reading you a story from Aesop's Fables, wherein which we learn some piece of wisdom, a nugget, a gem. So yeah, that's after the reaction. And by the way, this is season six, episode 13. This is the last episode of this season. I'm assuming there's gonna be another season after this, I hope. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the reaction. Hello, my name is Goody Aragon, and I come from Spain. I come from La Mancha. I am the magician of La Mancha. I always been creative. It's like a fire inside me, you know? I was a composer. I created music for full orchestra and some soundtracks for video games. I have a theater in Madrid. Almost every magician from Spain performs in that theater. To see my tricks spread around the world makes me proud. Penn and Teller performed in my trick, Love Ritual, in Full Ass, in season three. For me, as a fan of them, it was incredible. I'm doing- Wow, that's cool. I didn't know Penn and Teller performed his effect as well. This Love Ritual effect, that's the one I was talking about earlier. So far, Shin Lim, Penn and Teller, and me, all perform it. See how I am subtly trying to compare myself to these great magicians? But seriously, it's really cool seeing that Penn and Teller use this effect as well. Because as a magician, you are inundated with magic tricks. You see, you learn stuff all the time, and you have to decide which ones you're actually going to invest the time to learn and then actually use, and you decide that it's your style, so you keep it, and it becomes part of your permanent repertoire. And this lucky and love routine is one of those ones that I selected, and it's cool to see that Penn and Teller selected it as well. It makes me feel even better about my choice. Yeah, it's just a great effect. And oh, by the way, I'll share with you a link down below in case you want to see Shin Lin perform a variation of this magic trick. Let's jump back into the intro. A trick that I think is great for TV because it's very visual. I know it's very difficult to fool Penn and Teller, so I try to change some things. I put and add details to fool the best magician in the world. All right. With three randomly selected members of our studio audience, here with cards in his mono is Madrid's own Woody Aragon. Oh, 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 I, thank you, thank you. I am so happy to be here. It's the first time I am in this show. Uh, not the first time I come to Las Vegas. I come very often uh, just to visit my money. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I must tell you that my magic is not so much about the tricks. It's more about my relation with the people. So I appreciate a lot that you are seated with me here at the table. But you see that there is an empty chair and this is because I want to invite Alison. Do you mind to join us? Yeah. That's great, Alison. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alison, can you point a card? Mm. OK, this is for you. Please, can you point, I don't know, any card here? This one? OK, perfect. Can you point, I don't know, any card here? That one. That one or that one? That one. OK, as yes, you want. And pick any card, whatever. This card? Yes. It's okay? Yes. Are you happy with this? I am very happy with oh, this. Oh, it's very happy, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at the cards. Remember the card? Do you remember, remember the card? Me. Okay, do you remember the yes. card? Yeah, perfect. Can you, oh, do you remember the card? Yes. Okay, do you remember? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to try to find the cards. In fact, Pepe, <laughs> I found yours okay. because from the beginning I have a red card on the table. I don't know if you see, but I have a special red card here and I'm going to show you. Is the Joker. No. No? So this is not your card, no. but it's going to be because the Joker is wild. Look this. I read the card in the middle and I sing. I think it's very important. And I continue ripping. Don't worry, I can afford that. I have a lot of jokers at home. 
<laughs> and you can see I have pieces of Joker. And now, I take the pieces like this, I will put like this for the camera. And let's see, can you name your car for the first time? Five of Hearts. Five of Hearts, let me try. Sure. Let's see what happened. Oh my God. And the car changed, <laughs> not to any car, but the Five of Hearts. Wow, you know, I was watching really closely and they really seem like individual pieces, you know? I was looking to see if one of them was more thick than the others, but I didn't see that at all. How about you? And I was kind of watching his other hand because I saw it went down by his side off the table, but his main hand holding the cards right there, they just like closed, turned over, came back up and they were all different. So that's pretty cool. Unless he somehow just turned them over, I'd have to kind of rewatch to see if that was a possibility. Anyway, so far, so cool. Proceeding. Ken Teller, did I fool you yet? No, okay. I am going to continue with your car. Okay. Your car is black or red? Red. Red, that's good because I have the red ink yeah. of the five of, and the red of the back. Remember, the red of the, of the back. But can you name your car, Alison? It's the king of hearts. The king? Oh, this is a lot of colors. I will try. Ta -da 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 -da, ta -da 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 -da. Perhaps it starts to look like a king. But look, 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 it's not any king. If I did my work well, this is the king of hearts and nothing left. You can see. And now I continue. Flip king. <laughs> can you name your card? The eight of spades. Eight of spades. I do like this. And you know what happened? Nothing happened. But, but, <laughs> but the second time, the second time. It's amazing for myself. The card changed again, but it changed for, it's not good. It's very good, it's very good. And not only that, <laughs> not only that. I it's not good, it's very finale, good. I take the four pieces. This is the big climax. What is your car? Jack of spades. No, jack of spades in the world. <laughs> because it's the most difficult car. I will try, I will try. Very difficult, eh? Just, let's see. Yeah, the car changed yet to the jack of spades. Not only that, if I put the jack of spades through the hand, the cast and the pieces, he looks he's completely restored and really completely restored. You can see nothing left, and this is the Jack of Spades. Thank you very much, people. Thank you very much, Las Vegas. Woody Argon! <laughs> wow! All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my thoughts before we hear what Penn and Teller are gonna say. So, I thought that was really cool. I think he did an amazing job, very creative, very fun. Once again, I find myself impressed by his ideas. As I mentioned, with that first transformation, I just did not see how he did it, unless he was somehow just turning them over. For the one after that, I think I did see something there, but I think that most of the spectators at the table were lapping it up. And for the last change, I think I have an idea how he did it. I think I saw something. But overall, it was just like an amazing effect. It seems like he was using a lot of different methods, so it would keep you off guard the whole time. But yeah, anyway, I just love this guy. He's very funny, very personable, and his magic is creative. It's like the perfect package. Anything that he puts out, I want to watch. At any rate, let's hear what Penn and Teller have to say, and let's see if they were fooled. I love your style. Oh, thank it's you. It's so social. So why did you decide on this trick? It's a trick that is very good for TV, I think, because it's very visual. So when Penn and Teller first saw you were the next magician, Penn got very upset. Yeah. <laughs> he got pretty mad. Yeah, we, we know each other, and, and they know the kind of style that magicians from Spain, because the school we have, we do. And they say, every, every time we see magicians with a deck of cards from Spain, <laughs> we know they will fulfill. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's a really good compliment. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I miss the you, more yeah. he yells, the more it means you're, <laughs> you're a threat. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, I'm a threat to Penn and Teller. <laughs> <laughs> well, Woody, I could talk to you forever, but I guess I have to talk to those guys, too. Uh, okay, let's see. Penn, Teller. <laughs> Woody, 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 Woody. Oh. We probably should just hand this to you. For people who've watched a lot of Fool Us, people who've seen Penn and Teller live, they know that we do a thing called Love Ritual. Yeah. It's a trick we do in our show that the audience loves. And that trick was created, invented, written, entirely thought up by this man right here. Oh. <laughs> so there is, for all the shows we've done, 
closing our show with a trick by that man, it seems like gentlemen would just say, automatically you win. But no, we're not gonna do that. Because <laughs> that wouldn't be fair to you. Yeah? No, it wouldn't. We're gonna give you the respect to try to bust your ass. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, <laughs> we were watching you so much closer than we watch anybody else. Oh. And I gotta tell you, we enjoyed it. The audience just lapped it up. They were out of their minds loving it. Here's the thing he does. If you're studying this, he did the thing that's the most important thing you can do, which is using slightly different methods for what looks like the same trick. Just slightly different moves, just enough to screw us. Yeah. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, the Joker idea, Joker changing another card, is a uh, is an idea you see a lot in Magic. Ripping it up and having the, the piece ripped, just brilliant. Just the kind of brilliant plot you'd come up with. And you've had a huge amount of success in Spain. You must have enough money that you're going to keep it in one bank. You keep it in several banks, don't you? <laughs> and uh, I don't think, I don't think you fooled us, Woody. Okay. Woody, what do you think? Did, the, did he give you enough clues? I guess, yes, I guess, yes, I guess, yes. Thank you. All right, well, you didn't fool him, but you certainly fooled me, and you entertained us all. Thank you, Woody Argon. Thank you. All right, now I'll go ahead and give you my closing thoughts. That's funny how they said they probably just ought to give him the trophy, but they're not going to. They're gonna just judge his effect based off of if it fooled them or not. I can understand that, but still, I kind of wish he had won anyway. Oh, and I was surprised in the intro that he said that he had written music for video games. That's something I did not know about Woody. So clearly his talents extend to a variety of different arenas. Oh, and the part where Pin was talking in code to Woody, it was funny he used one of the same code words that I thought to use, but then later when he was talking about multiple Banks, I actually didn't get what he was talking about. Unless perhaps he was referring to the beginning of the effect where he's having the four different spectators select a card each. Maybe he was saying in the deck what he was holding, he had like four different banks of cards so he could like more easily force a card to each of them. Perhaps. I'm just guessing. But yeah, for sure, I think those cards had to be forced for the rest of the effect to work. Hmm, was there anything else to say about his performance? I will say that if you like his style of magic, you can just Google Woody Aragon magic and he does sell a lot of effects. I have bought a few of them and I was always very happy with his material. Recommended. Smash like and subscribe. Now we come to the part of the video where I will read you a story from Aesop's Fables. This time I'm gonna do it not randomly. I'm gonna kinda look around until I see one that looks nice. All right, I found one. It is called The Wolf and the Shepherd, chapter 152. The Wolf and the Shepherd A wolf hung about near a flock of sheep for a long time, but made no attempt to molest them. The shepherd at first kept a sharp eye on him, for he naturally thought he meant mischief. But as time went by and the wolf showed no inclination to meddle with the flock, he began to look upon him more as a protector than as an enemy. And when one day some errand took him into the city, he felt no uneasiness at leaving the wolf with the sheep. But as soon as his back was turned, the wolf attacked them and killed the greater number. When the shepherd returned and saw the havoc he had wrought, he cried, It serves me right for trusting my flock to a wolf. No moral of the storyline, we just gotta figure this one out ourselves. I gotta say, this reminds me a lot of the scorpion and the frog story. I wonder if that's also an Aesop's fable. You know, the scorpion rides across the frog's back, across the river, and then stings him and they both drown and die. And the scorpion's like, it's in my nature, what did you expect? They should have some kind of like, table when they were writing all these stories to make sure they didn't teach the same moral over and over in different stories. Because this isn't the first time I've read a story and felt like it was saying the same kind of thing. But oh well, maybe that's part of the concept. Maybe they hope to communicate this idea through a repetition. And actually, I can't even fault them for that because sometimes it is a good idea. If you have some of your favorite quotes to write them down and then read them again later, it's amazing how fragile our human memories are. And being aware of that, it's good to know because if there's something you really want to internalize, it helps to just reread it many times. But that's not the moral of this story. The moral of this story is about that wolf. And even if you get comfortable with someone who means to do you harm, you should keep your guard up because that wolf is still a wolf. Am I right? Never let your guard down. Never relax. Always be on edge. I think that's what we can learn and take into our daily lives. So anyways, thank you guys for being here. I need to rest a little bit and get better. Hopefully my voice will be restored to its former glory for the next video. Or maybe you didn't notice a difference at all. <coughs> Smash like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. 
Thank <laughs> you.